Hello everybody, this is USAF Iceman VR, also you probably knew me as Tenacious D or more likely USMC Iceman for over 15 years and the 1946 version of IL-2 going all the way back to Stormavuk. So you've probably flown with me on there. A lot of us have moved over to VR and when I first got my G2, plugged it in, started playing, uh, I did not have a good experience. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, I loved it, but I couldn't identify a plane within 500 meters of my nose. Uh, really not having a good time there. Was able to uh, work with some people and also watch a lot of YouTube videos and learn a lot of stuff I want to put into one YouTube video, primarily focusing to the IL-2 community. Uh, and I'm hoping this will help each and every one of you. So to start out, we're going to be going through and setting up the windows because there's some major settings within Windows itself that directly affect the VR experience within IL-2 that I've noticed and other players too. So one of the ones you're going to want to get is you're going to need to download a software program called OpenXR Developer Tools by Microsoft. It's for the Windows Mixed Reality OpenXR Runtime. You're going to be able to go ahead and get that turned in. It's going to have a setup. You're going to go through the setup, get it turned on, go into the settings, make sure that's turned on. And then disable is should be default, but make sure that that is disabled on the motion reprojection. I've tested it, no success there for any uh, performance within IL-2 there. In fact, it just made it worse. So those are the basic settings there on that. Uh, the next major setting within the game of Windows um, that's going to be a problem is the virtual screens. Now, when you first load your G2, and I've heard with multiple other VR systems, that it loads these v, uh, virtual screens and what these virtual screens do is if you go into your settings and you go into your display settings um, in fact I'm going to go ahead and do something real quick um, you would see multiple virtual screens in here up to three and what that does when I had the game set up um, my frame rates I could turn everything down to bare bones and get in there and I would see you know 45 frames within the lobby. Didn't matter what my settings were. It would just be this horrible uh, frame rate. And when I got in the game, it was even worse. So it was really killing the game. I turned that off and I saw an immediate, I, I, I hate to be drastic, but I'd say anywhere from 40 to 25% improvement. And, it, and I mean, it was just night and day. So definitely want to go in and do that. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick and easy. And, and, and I'll also post that link to the Microsoft here on how to do that on their on their docs. So you go into RegEdit, it's real easy, open it up, and we're going to go through the settings step by step so each of you can do that. Um, again, you'll go down, you'll see that we're going HKey Current Users, Software, Microsoft Windows, Current Versions, Holographic is where we want to go. And we're going to be adding a line of code called Pre-Allocated Virtual Monitors. You'll just copy paste that into here when you do it. Um, and it's a it's a reg D word, it's 32 bit, and you're gonna be basically making sure it's set to false zero, which turns them off, okay? You can turn them back on by just going one true and you would have them back on again. All right, so we're going in, go to current user, right? We go to software, and we go down to Microsoft. Once you're under Microsoft, you're going to go to the next li li setting, and if you forget, you just take a look. It's going to be current version. So that's going to be at the top, A, B, C. And I went down to current. So I just hit the C key, so it bring me down to current version. But I didn't do it for some reason. Microsoft current version. I'm wearing my contacts, and it doesn't like my eyes so good. There it is, Windows, current version, and then HP, uh, you're going to go H, holographic, open up the holographic, and then once you're in here, this is where you'll be able to add that line of code. So again, mine's set to zero, you just right click, you go new, you go D word, and then you'll paste it in there and you'll create it. I'm going to delete it, it's going to give a bing, yeah, whatever, delete, yeah, I don't need to do that. So if you don't want that, you can either go back here and you just say 
I want to edit this, I want my virtual screens, I like the low frame rate. You just go modify and you just set it to one or you can just delete that whole line of code completely, you know, that line, that change and just delete it and it'll be gone. Problem solved if you don't like it. But this is a major change um, and it's going to, it's going to definitely improve the overall experience you have. Again, I will post this up, uh, that link in the YouTube uh, below so you can find it. And then finally, there's one more I found out. It's called game mode settings within Microsoft uh, Windows 10, you know, Windows. No. So we're going to pull that up. It's game mode settings. You're going to go into here. You want to turn that off. By having it on, it's supposed to optimize things for games. A lot of people have just noticed it causing havoc within games, especially like Flight Sim X, um, um, Microsoft Flight Sim, and, and IL-2. So turning that off is a big performance uh, uh, help right there in general. Gets rid of a lot of bugs uh, that I've noticed popping up. And then make sure this is also turned off. I've turned it on and tested it. It, it was just stutter fest. So again, turn that off. So that completes the Windows setting. Um, there is MSI Afterburner. I will post a link about this in uh, below my YouTube uh, with another individual who did a really good job on using that. And, and overclocking the card if you want to do that. I do overclock my card uh, and I see uh, about 10 frames additional when I do that. Um, and that gives me more leg room to do more eye candy uh, in the game, which a lot of you will experience so yourselves. And we're all looking for that. We're trying to get the best visual quality and performance while flying in VR. Um, and it's kind of a dance right now. It's all based on how much horsepower does your system have. Um, I'm running a 27 uh, Ti, and I'm clocking that up a little bit uh, just to get a little more performance. I've uh, tried overclocking my chip, and I uh, had some issues there. So I'm going to be working more on clocking my chip. I'm not working on any of that stuff right now. This is just for the VR. So let's go ahead and go into Windows Mixed Reality and go ahead and load that up. Your VR should be plugged in for this in order for it to work uh, properly. So you can go in and do these settings. So make sure you have all that ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. We're going to go into the settings, and I apologize for the bird noises. I don't know how to turn that off. But inside, I have the audio turned off just so I could record, but you those on. Um, and that will, you know, basically control the sound for your headset. If you do have the sound drop, back onto that. If you're getting an issue, I had a bug with my AMD X570 motherboard when I plugged in the... VR goggles to my graphics card and the USB into a USB 3 port and I have a US 3.C uh, in the back of my motherboard. Neither of them provided enough power to properly operate my goggles. In fact the sound would drop while I was in game. I would uh, constantly have it clicking on and off switching between my headset to the uh, speakers on, or to the he other headset I had. Uh, my uh, ear for my, my microphone headset. Um, so that I, I would disable, I was going in and disabling all the sounds uh, and just leaving the VR sounds turned on. I was doing everything. And I finally found where somebody said, hey, I used a, a powered USB 3 port, plugged in my uh, G2 goggles and everything was solved. I didn't have any more sound issues and it was better. I bought one. I, it cost me 16 bucks. I you know, power it, make sure it's powered. It has to have an actual power supply to it. So this is what makes the difference. I you know, plugged in my VR goggles to this powered USB hub and 3.0 and I turned it on, boom, no more problems. I have not had a problem ever since. So that is a solution uh, that I recommend. Next is your headsets. I'm gonna go real quick over all this. Just take a look at what I have, the settings. I'm not gonna say why, but this is if you're streaming, you can turn that up if you want better visibility for your people who you're streaming or recording to. Best quality, we always love best quality, that's better visuals. This is the default, best quality again, leave that there. 90 hertz, okay, okay, we're all good. Everything else is set pretty standard. Next is Steam, this is a big one. Now if your game is not set up in Steam, you'll have to open up the Steam app, add the game, because you, like me, I bought it uh, directly from 1C a long time ago as a beta tester. And so, <laughs> non-Steam game, you go in there and add it, you'll find it in the box, you'll click it, load it. Now when I did this, yes, it did load it uh, in my Steam settings and it allowed me to go into the VR Steam settings and adjust but it didn't do anything 
it didn't it actually did not do that I was noticing that it was leaving it on the defaults um, that I it will f but you know it was picking for me and I only discovered that when I alt tabbed out and I got into my steam settings and I went into the video and I opened up the per application settings when I opened this up it's a aisle 2 storm of a great battles which I've added and it just said aisle 2 and then on, in there and I'll show I mean I can, I'll show you the, what I'm talking about here in a second yeah, this is a problem. So if you're running into this problem, this is one you'll be wanting to look at, and I'm hoping Steam fixes it. Uh, if anybody knows somebody at Steam and can point this video out to them and say, hey, look, this guy discovered a bug in your program, uh, here's one of them. Uh, and maybe they can say, well, he didn't do it right, or here's a workaround, or whatever. I'd love to know, because I have not found a solution to fix this. So anyway, this is just for demonstrations. Your game is set in here. You'll be able to set your graphics. Uh, we're going to go back to the beginning though here. Under general, everybody knows that the basic settings for this card at 100% or for these uh, G2s at 100% is right around here. It's uh, 3092. That is not the native of your goggles. In fact, if you leave it at 3092, it looks beautiful in the game at 12 frames per second for my system. So unplayable. Um, if you grind this down, now, I was able to run it at that setting, actually, um, but everything was turned off. It was horrible. It still didn't look good. Couldn't ID anything. I mean, the gr trees look great. Uh, planes at, like, f you know, 100 meters look great, but everything else looked garbage. So this is the closest you can get to the native on the G2. is 2,184. It's 2,160 is the native. So there's your settings. Video. I'm using the advanced super sampling. I see a performance increase. I've heard people both ways, but I see performance increase, less stuttering. The planes are cleaner. I can shoot them. I don't have to. I'm not trying to figure out which of the three little uh, digital images that break up in a high speed turn are I'm supposed to be shooting at, which is not what I'm trying to experience there. Um, and that's a big one. Under the actual app, you'll go in and make sure motion smoothing is set. And I bump mine up. I, I'm only showing this. This is not the one actually profile that I use in the game, but this is close enough. And I've bumped mine up, and I'm happy with the higher setting for visibility in the game. Uh, if you know something special, like this is pointless and just causing me problems, and it's all, you know, placebo. Let me know. You know, I like to I like to learn. So here's some basic settings. Here's how to know if we did that OpenXR um, correctly. You'll see Windows Mixed Reality listed here. You can switch back and forth just by clicking this button. You can go back into the Steam version. I'm running the beta, um, which is it seems to be working more stable and better for all of this. But um, you can switch back and forth. Pepsi Coke. I found, and a lot of other people found, the min Windows Mixed Reality, which we did earlier in the video, setup runs better. Okay, so all of that said and done, we got that taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and get out of this real quick. Uh, I'm going to actually turn off the VR at this point and unplug it because I want to go into the game settings and uh, show you what my in-game IL-2 settings are. So let me do that real quick. So let me load IL-2 and I think it's going to try to force the VR back and I just got to turn that off. Alright, let's lift this up. Yep, turn that off. So we'll let this load, and then we're going to go into my IL-2 settings um, and kind of walk through that and why I do certain settings. And this is something that you'll be able to play with yourself uh, in-game um, and, and see what works best for your system and, you know, hits that sweet spot for you uh, that you're looking for. So this should load pretty quickly. I don't know about you guys, but this is always seems to take a long time to load, even though I have one of the fastest hard drives you can buy. Yeah, I... Alright, this is the longest it's ever taken. Fast forward all through this part until you see it pop up anyway. This is ridiculous. Alright, here we go. All 
All right, so we're going to go into the settings, graphics, and I'm just going to walk through real fast. Um, if you can't see this, I apologize, but screen resolution, why is it lower? Because that's the mini screen. Turn it down, uh, 1024 by 76. You're not seeing that in the game. That doesn't have anything to do with the game. That's just that little mini screen while you're flying. UI to auto, I go ultra shadows because it really makes a big difference for me when I'm trying to spot planes and, and fight. Uh, mirrors medium. You can do whatever you like there. Um, I, I do that just for extra frames, and I don't use mirrors often. There's only a couple planes I like it in. 51, Spitfire, etc. Uh, canopy reflections off. Distance landscapes. I keep that on. That helps me a lot with navigation. You can play with that again uh, based on your system. If you're seeing frame rate drop, that's when you'd lower down. Uh, horizon distance 150, which is the max. You know, I, I like to be able to navigate, so I keep that on. Blurred landscape filtering. Now I've tried it sharp and I've tried it blurred. Blurred definitely lets you see those planes on the ground easier when you're up at 3,000 meters uh, and they're down on the deck. It lets you see the planes when they're cross, cutting across the forest or the city and you know you, you start to lose it. You start to see a little bit better because it doesn't blend in with the background from, a, from over 2,000 meters away or even within 1,000 meters sometimes. So it does make a difference. I've turned the terrain roughness off. That's that new texturing. It's really beautiful and everything else. I love it, but not looking for that in the VR right now. I'm trying to get more performance. Grass quality, turn that off. Um, I'm tired of running over little boxes and AAA guns on the runway um, that I don't see. I had a uh, nice kill streak going and lost it uh, because of that. Uh, exploded on a, tr you know, killed myself on a AAA gun. I didn't, or actually it's boxes or uh, just there. It wasn't even a gun, just the boxes. Uh, cloud quality, I went to medium. I was running ultra. And I even went to low. Low was horrible. Couldn't I would not use recommend it unless you have to. Um, medium is a good compromise. It looks okay visually in the game. Uh, high didn't seem to be that much better. It just killed some frames. And ultra again killed frames, but looks good. Um, nothing gonna help you in the game for shooting people down though. Just eye candy. Uh, MSAA. Uh, I'm using MSAA because it is a lot easier to see the targets at a distance, to ID the planes, etc. Um, you can use FXAA if you want. Uh, if your system's older and slower, that will give you some performance boost there. Again, if you're just getting murdered with frame rate, that's one to play with. Uh, again, dynamic resolution to full. I haven't had any success with lower settings there. In fact, it just makes the game worse and unable to play. Uh, Anti-aliasing, I'm running four times. This is a big frame rate killer. At eight times, I get half the frames. At two times, you know, I'm, I'm running solid 90. Um, with four times, I'm running uh, around 50 to uh, 55 in the sky, up above clouds and stuff like that. Down on the deck, uh, on the runway, I'm getting 40 to 45 frames. Doesn't cause any stuttering. It doesn't cause it uh, um, unplayable. In fact, with the, uh, the frame rates turned off, I don't even notice a difference other than looking at the frame number drop. It's all good to go. Uh, gamma correction, that's based on the map. You can bump that up and down. And I have everything checked except for full screen and multiple GPU. The full screen causes a lot of errors, uh, bug issues within the game if you leave that clicked. And multiple GPU is not even working in IL-2. It's completely disabled, so it's just a placebo. All right, so that's it for the in-game stuff that I've done. Uh, last, I believe, we went through, we're going to go ahead and look at your NVIDIA settings. Uh, and we'll talk about that now. One of the things about your NVIDIA driver, I don't know if any of you have uh, the GeForce Experience. Uh, that's what I'm using to record this right now. Um, but uh, one of the other reasons I use it is I use it for the drivers. So when you're doing your drivers, like if you've already installed the latest driver but you didn't do this, you can actually go and reinstall the driver. All right. And when you do reinstall a driver, you have custom, you want to go to custom settings. It's going to go through the setup here, and the main thing about the custom settings, I'm hoping it doesn't crash when I'm recording while I'm doing this, is it allows you to do a clean install, meaning it will delete the old software that it installed from the pre previous drivers, and uh, I'm hoping it doesn't cause me a problem here, um, and it puts a fresh install. If you don't do that and you just download the latest driver and it throws it on top, you can get a lot of random issues uh, performance-wise within the game that you're not going to like. Um, so this is that perform a clean installation. This is, I highly recommend every time you install a new driver to do it this way. That way you get a clean install, you reboot the computer. Anytime you're installing drivers, I know that Windows say, you don't need to reboot. Reboot the computer. 
Come on, just reboot. It, it makes it better. All right, so doing this step right here when you do your driver installation, and you can reinstall the driver before we do anything else. Do that. Consider that as a as a tune up uh, before you do it, and you you will see a, a lot of little crazy things that hey, I have this problem and nobody else does. Go away. It also in general it's just a good practice you know overall practice to be doing it's something i've done for a long 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 time being a beta tester of of, of video graphics and so on so we're going to get into uh il2 settings within the uh, nvidia i'm sorry if you don't have an nvidia card um you know youtube is out there good luck on that side i used to have a uh, ati card and i got rid of it when we all had that big graphical error uh, on the visual updates uh, about October of 2020 or something like that or whenever they came out with that September or something like that so I bought a new card maybe it was July all right <coughs> excuse me I use the image sharpening uh, I turn that on and off you can play with it turn it on and off um, in the VR it seems to help a little bit it may be placebo again uh, anisotropic filtering application controlled obviously I showed you why we're using it in game do not turn on the um, card settings for FXAA or MSAA um, while you're in using the in-game settings. Um, I've noticed some issues there. Application controlled for the filtering. Uh, mode is application controlled. Off for transparency. Again, no performance or anything like that. It's, you know, if you have all the horsepower, turn it on. I don't know. Maybe it works. Let us know. Uh, low latency mode off. Max frame rate off. That doesn't apply to VR. Fixed refresh rate for the monitor technology. I don't want it running my G-Sync stuff while I'm not even using the screen. Again, off for the MSAA. OpenGL, that's all standard. We don't use, this is not an OpenGL game. Power management, maximum performance. You paid the money for the card, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars. Why are you not running it at maximum performance? You know, that's what you paid for. Turn it off. You know, it's only running while the, while the L2 game is going. So that's why you're doing it in the per app settings. So you can add that in just by looking up the, the startup. So when the game starts, boom, you're in the setup mode. Makes a big difference. You know, you just go in add. You find the IL2 right here. You click it. You add selected program. Boom. And then you're in there. All right. So uh, application controlled on the other portions. Shader cache. Okay. So these ones you can play with. This is what I like to say, you know, what are your toppings? Here you go. Pick your toppings. I turn mine on. It uh, gives minimal loss uh, of image quality, but it again, gives me more performance. And that's what I was looking for is higher performance so I could turn on like AAA or anti-aliasing within the game. Uh, go a little higher up uh, on the, on the um, video within my goggles, like 2400 versus 21. Uh, so it makes a big difference. Um, Again, on on the next for anisotropic sample optimization. And then negative LOD BIOS. Again, this is a topping option. You can try allow and clamp. I prefer clamp. It just makes the image cleaner and sharper for me. High quality for the texture. Try linear optimization. I leave that on. Again, you can turn that on and off and see what you like. Thread optimization on. I think that's a triple, that's a GL. Uh, allows multiple CPUs. Um, that's, you know, because I mean, I'm running 12 cores every year, probably have four cores on an Intel. Leave that on. You can go back and forth, see what you like on that. Triple buffering off, that's OpenGL thing, so we don't, that's not going to even apply to this game. Use the 3D settings for a vertical sync, because again, it's VR. And then pre rendering frames. I've been testing this. You can go all the way up to four. Some people say that they see smoothing uh, out in the game when they do that. It's forcing the rendering onto your G, your CPU before it goes to the GPU. All right. So think of it as you know it, it, it explains it in here, but it, it definitely makes a difference on 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 the on that inside the game playing against AI. I noticed, but when I was playing against players, I started seeing some stuttering. So still in testing on that. I'm just going to leave it on the one because uh, that is, seems to be standard and it seems to be working best. All right, so that's all the settings I can uh, think of at this point in time. If you guys have any other ones, tweaks, or little things that you might uh, know that help improve, leave it in the comments. That'd be great. Uh, that's what we try to do here as a community. And look forward to seeing you guys in the sky.